All right, hello there. Before we get to the good news today, and there is some positive stuff today that we're going to get into. Uh, and and it, to wrap up this video, I am going to talk about the overall crime. And uh, we're also going to talk about some politics as well in this video today. But let's get to the urgent news because I have no patience to weed from the courier today. Maybe we'll do that at the end of the week if there's other... New stories in Queens, but guess what? The Bronx is a mess today. The Bronx is a huge mess, and the media has been missing in action today in the Bronx, except on one fatal story that we're going to get into. But let's get into the news from the Bronx today. So, first up, we have this incident according to NYC Alerts 911. This morning, we got word that we had a confirmed gunpoint robbery at Commonwealth Avenue in the Bronx. So let's see where this was. So I'm going to pull that up on a separate Google Maps tab so we get an idea of what's going on here. Oh, oh, look at this. The fan nest section. Okay, well, that's very unfortunate and not. Oh, my goodness. Yep. Parkchester. I know exactly where this is. Right by the Macy's over there. Yep. West Farms Bus Depot? Yeah, so I know exactly where this is. Mm-hmm. Okay, next up in the Bronx. Next story we're going to get to. Uh, thankfully, there was a stabbing in... Well, bad and good. Bad was there was a stabbing in Houston and Broadway today, but... Uh, mail was stabbed, but no aid needed. But we had a fire in Queens. Dwelling... I don't want to focus on that, so let's get into the major breaking news that has been going on in the Bronx so far this afternoon. First up, 600 Pelham Parkway South confirmed gunpoint robbery. Two male Hispanics wearing all-black clothing fled southbound on the Bronx River Parkway. Oh, Bronx. Oh, this is Bronx Park. I think this is by the zoo. Yeah, let's look this up. Because if this is Pelham Parkway South, I think this is not too far. Hang on here. I have an idea where this could be. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yep. Yep. Right on the borderline of where Fordham Road is. They say Bronx Park. Yeah, Bronx Park East. Yeah. So that's Bronx Park East right here. See, this is where... Um, This is where the parking lot to the Bronx Zoo is. So, yeah, I... My gut was telling me if this was Pelham Parkway and Bronx Park East, I was like, wait a minute. I mean, my God, a gunpoint robbery right by the Bronx Zoo. Where is the media on this? They're missing in action today. You know, I understand the weather is a big story, and I understand that we potentially may have our longest heat wave for the first time in almost 10 years, but my God, the Bronx is a mess today. Where is the media? Where is the media today? Okay, fire in Brooklyn, but I don't want to focus on that. And then, look at this. Gunpoint robbery. Suspect is a male black wearing a black hoodie, black sweatpants, and black sneakers. So where on Tremont Avenue is this? As I said, the media should really be... You know, you would think that Darla Miles... Uh, Sonia Rincon. Sonia Rincon was covering a story in Brooklyn today on Channel 7. Oh! Oh! Oh boy! Look at this! Another shooting by the Bronx Zoo today. So literally, we had two shootings right by the Bronx Zoo today. My goodness. I mean, trust me. If this happened on Arthur Avenue in the Bronx, you know... You know the people over there would not be too kind to that. Mm -mm. All right, they value their community. All right. Remember, it's the real little Italy for a reason. Now, thankfully, Channel Seven did cover this, so we have a um, vehicle accident. Sadly, we have a dead on arrival that went to a nearby hospital. Another in critical condition. So. Apparently, according to Shannon Stone from WABC TV, this was a hit and run incident that she just mentioned on the air. So, 
another area of the Bronx that I know pretty well. Yep. Right by Cretona Park. So, a lot of incidents in the Bronx that the media has been ignoring today. You know, it seems the Bronx is also starting to get ignored too. And I will mention, I was on the 46 today and a lot of the Queens Village units are going to the Bronx to help accommodate the bus redesign up there. So I just want to bring that up. So at least we're going to move on to some good news today. So we have some good news from Manhattan. Alvin Bragg is finally doing the right thing. So the good news is the uh, Luis Alba is going to be, hang on here, where is it? Where is it? Okay, that's not it. This is a different, this is a different one. Okay, so we actually have a uh, article we're going to read from the New York Post. And let's just hope my mic is on mute in terms of well, the computer's microphone. Here we go. This is it. All right. So, breaking earlier this morning at around 11 o'clock. Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg has finally dropped charges against the bodega worker Jose Alba. While his office conceded there wasn't enough evidence to prosecute the case that sparked national widespread outrage. Now, remember, this story in Hamilton Heights was making national headlines because a lot of people were complaining that, oh, Texas and Florida, for an example, they have their own separate staying your ground laws, but why doesn't New York have that? So... Another example of how New York State is just completely backwards. So, this is it right here. Alvin Bragg's office filed a motion in Manhattan Criminal Court to dismiss the case against the 61-year-old bodega worker after an investigation found it could not prove the defendant was not justified in his use of deadly physical force. Bragg and his office faced backlash after Mr. Alba was swiftly jailed and charged with fatally stabbing the 35-year-old... 35-year-old violent ex-con Austin Simon, who had attacked Alba inside the Hamilton Heights bodega back on Friday, July 1st. The decision to drop the second-degree murder charge comes weeks after the Post highlighted Alba's flight, which saw the hard-working bodega clerk initially held at Rikers Island with a whopping $250,000 bail release. So, according to the National Association of Latino State Chambers of Commerce, if it weren't for the New York Post, Mr. Alba would still be in jail. So, yeah, I mean, the New York Post does deserve some credit. And, you know, I will also give a little bit of credit to Fox News for at least covering this. Because, again, they were the ones who also brought this up in a national platform. So, here we go. Um, I want to see if the head of the Bodega Union issued a statement today. Um, okay, so one of the union heads did say something. Because I'm wondering, wait a minute, where's Mateo? Because remember, Fernando Mateo was the head of the, bodegas, uh, the Bodega Union. So, here we go. Um, Francisco Marte, head of the Bodega and Small Businesses Association... Um, said the bodega employee's voice had finally cracked when he first heard the charges were being dropped. So, Marte told the New York Post that the New York District Attorney, well, the New York County District Attorney, yes, because that's Manhattan, told me around 10.30 this morning, I called Mr. Alba right away. He was very emotional. His voice broke, so... I got the notification from NBC4 New York at... 11 o'clock this morning, and, you know, this was the biggest sigh of relief that, uh, that I could get with, you know, the troubling month that New York has had with the crime so far. This has been a very violent July, and I unfortunately saw this coming. But... Okay, so, so far, we don't have anything from Fernando Mateo. Oh, good, 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 okay. 
So Fernando did make a statement. Let's see what he said. Fernando Mateo said he saw the judge and jury was the videotape. He did the right thing. I congratulate Alvin Bragg. He has proved people wrong. And of course, you know, Lee Zeldin's not going to feel something out of this. And I can understand the anger that Lee Zeldin feels. So Lee Zeldin did issue a statement today saying, After weeks of public pressure, Alvin Bragg finally came to the same conclusion we all did a long time ago. Mr. Alba should have never been charged with homicide. Yeah, murder is not the appropriate word. Because remember, in court, the charges were um, first-degree homicide, I think. Jose Alba was an innocent man acting in self-defense, and now he's finally a free man. So, there you go. I mean, this is... Uh, this is very good news. And I just hope in the future we can hopefully have a, our standard ground law. And hopefully I've been hearing that Lee Zeldin's strongly considering that. Oh boy. Look what's on Channel 1's homepage. Oh boy. You gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me right now. It seems the shark talk... It came from Long Island on the South Shore. It's now making its way to the South Shore, Queens, right now. You gotta be kidding me! And look at this. They're claiming on Channel One's homepage that there have been five shark attacks on coastal areas in the past two weeks. And they're claiming, oh, there have been three sharks fighting so far this week at Rockaway Beach. But yet, we don't have any shark sightings along the Long Island Sound and Fort Totten. Doesn't that get you a little bit alarmed that the sharks haven't gone to the North Shore yet? Yep. And mind you, Shark Week begins on Sunday. And I think The Rock's going to be opening the ceremonies at 8 p.m. on Discovery Channel. And the shark is... Have even gotten to a point where I saw the new Minions movie today, and let me tell you, right in the beginning of the film, they cleverly had Gru see sharks. Hmm, interesting, right? I'm also happy about this news today. Word came out at 2 o'clock Eastern that former New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio has dropped out of his congressional primary for the newly drawn up New York 10th Congressional District. Bye bye de Bozo. <laughs> Man, am I so happy about this today. You know, right when I was getting out of Minions 2 today. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop the presses. This guy... Cause what happened was, earlier today, it was on Channel 1's homepage, but of course... Da-da. Da-da. Da-da-da-da-da. Shark Talk had to come on the homepage. Now did it. Alright, so let's watch the video from DeBozo. But we will read the tweet that he did send out. So here's the tweet that de Blasio was... Um, that he sent out today. It's clear the people of the newly drawn up New York 10th Congressional District are looking for another option, and I respect that. Time for me to leave electoral politics and focus on other ways to serve. I really am grateful for all the people I met, stories I heard, and the many good souls who helped out. Thank you all. Hi, everybody. I just want to say these last couple of months, I have had this really amazing opportunity to spend time with people in Brooklyn and in Manhattan, talking about their lives, listening to New Yorkers, everything they've been through, and all, all the amazing spirit people have brought fighting back after COVID. It has made me more proud of the people of the city than ever. 
and I've listened really carefully to people. And it's clear to me that when it comes to this congressional district, people are looking for another option. And I respect that. And I just want to say I love the people of this city. I really want to keep serving, and I'm going to find a different way to serve. But I'm filled with gratitude at the same time. I've been on an amazing journey with so many of you. I want to thank all the people who have helped in this campaign and before. Uh, the members of the team, the, the volunteers, the supporters, everyone who's been part of it. Thank you. And it's made a huge difference. And even though this is not going to work out, I hope you know how much I appreciate you. And we're going to do a lot together to make this city better in the future. So I'm, I'm feeling a lot of gratitude. I'm also recognizing I made mistakes. I want to do better in the future. I want to learn from those mistakes. And uh, it's been a humbling experience at times, but it's been a healthy experience. And the bottom line is I'm filled with gratitude today, truly, for all the good in New York City. I feel New York City in my heart and soul. I really do. And I'm just appreciative. Uh, and I'll see you along the way. Well, bye-bye, DeBozo. You know, you ruined our city for a while. You basically drove the homeless population up. You know, the emotionally disturbed people were all over Queens Boulevard today. And it even got to a point where I had to call the police because, guess what? There was a guy who had an open container today. Yeah, that's illegal. He was drinking rum. It, my second thought was, it's bad enough he had an open container today. You know, with the hot weather that we have? I mean, really? Really? This is what Rudy Giuliani talks about. It's called proactive policing. You intervene before a situation happens. Ridiculous. So... This is a man who drove our city backwards, unfortunately. And in terms of New York's 10th congressional, and I'll pull it up right here. I know in terms of my congressional district, uh, I don't have a primary coming up. But we know one guy who's probably going to probably gonna win the primary and... You've probably seen all the ads recently. You've probably been bombarded with it. Where is he? Yeah, Dan Goldman. This is the guy who's likely going to end up winning the primary come August 23rd. And in Maryland today, there's a primary, but there, there's been problems with the polls today. When America needed him, Dan Goldman answered the call. Mr. Goldman, you may begin. Donald J. Trump abused the power of his office. After a decade as a top New York prosecutor, Dan Goldman proved the case against Trump. Today he's running for Congress because our entire future is at stake. The right to vote, to choose, our safety, our planet, even democracy itself. Dan has the experience and the courage to meet the moment. I'm Dan Goldman and I approve this message. Yeah, so if you've been seeing any of the New York TV stations, you've been noticing that ad a lot recently. And I'm getting sick and tired of already seeing it because obviously in the newly drawn up smaller Congressional 6th District, remember my district shrunk. I used to have a lot more coverage in my district before the maps were drawn up, before the mess that's now going to be between Jared Nadler and Carolyn Maloney next month. But, you know, this is what happens. So, I want to mention that Grace Ming is not being primary, to no surprise there. Because, again, everybody loves Grace Ming. Everybody loves her in, in my district. Okay, this is a little bit unusual. Where is Grace Ming? Okay, well, we're not going to show you her picture. But, again, Dan Goldman has a lot of momentum in this district because he, he has the name recognition from the Trump impeachment hearings. So, that would make sense. So, anyhow, 
one last point before we talk about overall crime to wrap up this video. Guess what, folks? We could have a rematch between Nicole Maliotakis and Max Rose in the newly drawn up 11th, which still keeps same same coverage territory. But Nicole Maliotakis is facing another primary, and, you know, I would be very shocked if she lost. Because a lot of people are calling her a rhino. It's, you know... Look, I'm very happy that she did vote yes on the infrastructure bill. So, this is going to be very interesting. So, this area of Brooklyn... Oh boy, look at this. So it looks like some parts of the district got screwed. Look at this. Gravesend and Midwood are not in the district anymore. So that's the mess with congressional district redistricting that you have. The fact that right now McDonald Avenue, and Ocean Parkway, and Coney Island Avenue are now going to lose their conservative voice in Congress is very, very unfortunate. But hey... The good news is, Bay Ridge is still going to be in the district. That's the good news. Dyka Heights is still going to be in the district. In fact, Dyka Heights is getting more coverage now. Huh. That's interesting. Okay. Well, last but not least, let's talk about Channel 1 at least doing the right thing. But guess what? Pat Kiernan is not in the studio again. So I guess we have to play a game of Where's Pat instead of Where's Waldo. All right, it, All right, is, it time is time to take, to take a, look a look at the two Tuesday morning papers. Here is the New York Post taking a broad look at crime stats today. Murders are down more than 5% so far this year, but major crimes like rape, robbery, and assault are all higher than 2021. A professor from John Jay College tells the Post that he's especially surprised by the 46% rise in car thefts. He says those numbers are right out of the 1990s. For 250... So, I actually want to go on the record that... Um, Somebody at Councilwoman Vicky Palladino's office was actually able to fact check that article. And I was actually able to fact check it as well based on borough by borough crime rise. We actually know the truth of the borough's most notable stats. So um, let's go to the most important one here. We have the map of the five boroughs right here. Now, Staten Island is seeing a rise in crime too. Robberies are up, homicides up a little bit, but not as noticeable as the most homicides per capita. And no surprise who leads the most gunshot incidents in all of New York City right now. That title has to belong to the Bronx. So we're going to circle the Bronx. Okay, let's zoom this out, you know, because that's not going to help me. 125 would be a good number. Okay, so now you can see this a lot better. So, the Bronx, actually no, let's put H. Yeah, okay, so H means homicides. The letter H means most homicides per capita is in the Bronx. Sexual assaults, S-A, I'm going to put that for Manhattan. Sexual assaults are dramatically up in Manhattan. And now we're going to put BG. Yes, BG is the most in Brooklyn right now. Uh, Queens and Brooklyn are tied for burglaries right now at the moment. So we're going to put BG right there. But car thefts, let's put CG, CT. Car thefts, CT. All right. Car thefts, believe it or not, the most are happening in Queens. Yeah, the most are happening in Queens right now. So overall crime is in the other four boroughs. But most cases in Staten Island, even though it's gone up a little bit, it's not as bad as these other boroughs in terms of, you know, what's going on. I mean, yeah, shootings are up in Manhattan too. That's another factor. Maybe a little bit in Brooklyn. Maybe, yeah. So you know what? Let's put, let's put homicides here. 
let's put homicides here for Brooklyn. So, second most homicides according to what I found out from an undisclosed source at Vicky Palladino's office. Homicides are number two in Brooklyn. So, that is a fact right there. But again, burglaries, car thefts, mostly are happening in Queens. So that doesn't surprise me right there. So that New York Post article had to get fact-checked. And um, a part of it does have to go with Rudy Giuliani as well. Because he also helped out a little bit on this as well. So I do want to thank the former mayor for doing his part in terms of that. But... Yeah, I mean, this is what Channel 1 is constantly ignoring. Alright, they they briefly want to talk about a New York Post article today that everybody is so panicked about. But in reality, do you guys even fact check? You guys even fact check like Vicky Palladino and Rudy Giuliani do. Because they're the ones fact checking for us. And not to mention, the car thefts, and especially... This is accurate information from Vicky Pavadino's office. Her office in her city council district, number 19, they've been getting numerous calls about car thefts. Yeah. So you want proof that she's getting phone calls about car thefts in her neck of the woods in Queens? You talk to Vicky Pavadino about that. So, obviously, homicides up in the Bronx. That's no surprise there. The burglaries are so hard to keep an eye on in Brooklyn. It's like one minute it's happening there, the next it's happening there. It's like, that doesn't surprise me about Brooklyn. And Manhattan, remember, Manhattan has the most women per capita out of all the five boroughs. Either visiting or residing in the borough of Manhattan. So, that doesn't surprise me that sexual assault is up in Manhattan this year. So these people, again, at Channel 1 don't fact check. And I'm going to be literally outside of their studios on August 15th. I'm planning a visit over to Chelsea. To talk about the truth about Channel One. Alright. Because somebody has to do this. Somebody has to call this TV station out constantly. And I'm going to keep doing it. Until they get their act together. I am planning to be over at Chelsea Market. At 11.30. 12 noon on that Monday. And if anybody wants to watch me do the taping, because obviously I'm not going to be yelling at the top of my lungs. I'm going to be wearing my uh, headphones and, you know, a friend's going to be with me and he's going to learn the hard truth too about this TV station because he has a Spectrum News affiliate up in Syracuse that's uh, not covering the crime in his neck of the woods too. Syracuse is seeing a lot of crime up there, but it's not as bad as the city. That's a given. So, I'm done talking for today. I am in a good mood that Alvin Bragg finally caved. I'm in a good mood that Bill de Blasio is finally going to be out of our lives for good. And, you know, a lot of positives today. But the one thing I want to mention, where is the weather? All right, Channel One should be focusing more on that right now. We're in the middle of a six-day heat wave. We're not going to break below 90 until Monday or Tuesday next week. That should be top priority right now. So, I'm going to wrap this up. Please just try to stay cool. Thank God I am. And take it easy these next couple of days because be mindful of what you're eating and drinking during this heat wave because it's it's very health cautious that, you know, 
you are staying hydrated and drinking and, and eating healthy food. Or at least food that is supposed to be beneficial for digestion. So that's it. Thank you for watching.